friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and I am super excited to do this really fun circuit building tutorial with you. We are learning how to build circuits and also how to use brains in our circuits, also known as the Arduino Uno or for us the Elegoo Uno. If you're a patron of ours, you have a lot of the files that you need to get this done. And if you're not, you should consider checking us out at patreon.com slash rosie research. Today, we're gonna make a traffic light with red, yellow, and green lights. We'll have a little switch so we can activate it. And we have a few resistors. You need that push button, some extra cable wires, and then of course, the brains behind our circuit. I am gonna use this little piece again, which is our shield. It plugs really nicely right into our Arduino Uno, which allows us to have a project that's really compact and it's not sort of winding around and falling apart. But it only works for really small projects and that is what we have today. Now, if you haven't yet, I encourage you to check out how we built this in Tinkercad circuits and that was also where we're gonna code it. All right, but let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we will add in our red LEDs and you want to make sure that here are the columns here, right now they look like rows because we're going vertical, that are all attached in our breadboard. So if I put my LED in like this, I have attached the long leg and the short leg. So I do need to make sure that I have the short leg in one and the long leg in another. So if you have your board going vertically, that means that the short leg, I'm gonna always put my short leg on top of my long leg. I'm gonna put them both in. Make sure you check where that long leg is. It should always be sort of down towards the bottom of your project. You can kind of see where those legs are going right there. And so those are our red lights that we're gonna put in for our traffic light. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with our yellow lights. Again, this long leg, it's gonna to go towards the bottom. We can skip a row between the two of them. And then we will plug the other one in as well. Again, always making sure that you keep the long leg orientation the same for all of the LEDs that we are going to use today. Always wanna to keep track of those. Now we can add the green in, long leg towards the bottom of my board. And I will plug the green in just like that. So now I have all six of my LEDs. They're sort of going, all the legs are going down my breadboard with the long leg of each respective color always at the bottom. And then between the two reds, they're actually in that same um, row. So they're actually in the same spot here. These are both of the short legs and then both of the long legs underneath them. Both of the short legs for the yellow, both of the long legs underneath them. All right, and that's just gonna be helpful in making it work out for us. Now in our Tinkercad, we threw a resistor for all these into ground from the short legs. What we're gonna do today instead is we're actually gonna put the red leg resistor into ground and we'll connect our short legs together. That allows us to do it with one less resistor. So I'm gonna make, or two less resistors. I'm gonna make a staple out of my resistor. It looks kind of like this. I will plug one end into the ground pin. So let's see, here it is. Here is the ground pin. It says GND for us. And that GND pin is the second one from the top. I'm gonna to plug, oops, one leg of my resistor into that. And the other end goes into the short leg of the red LED. So the very top piece that you have your LED going into. All right, so it's gonna go right there with those short legs. And now I need to tie the short leg of my red with the short leg of my yellow with the short leg of my green. You can do that with longer jumper cables. I have little small ones that should work great for my stuff just to keep it all nice and organized. I'm gonna pull some out. Let's see if these guys are still happy. So I have these really small little jumper cables like this. Yours might look longer like that and that is just fine. It will still work for you. I'm gonna go into the short leg of my red and the short leg of my yellow. Oops. You gotta practice your dexterity with your circuit building here. It's always a little tricky to get it just right. There we go. 
You want to double check those that it's going into the top pin for the LEDs because the top pin for us is always going to be that short leg. Now I need to connect the short leg of the yellow to the short leg of the green. You can do that with another little jumper. Now you'll notice I can't put a second wire in right here. I can't put two wires into one hole, so I'm going to come onto the back side. I'll move my resistor out of the way. I'm going to go from the top leg of my yellow into the top leg of my green, and that will be the short leg of my yellow into the short leg of my green. Just like that. There we go. We can move these guys back up and it will look great. All right, so now I have all of these guys connected to ground through a resistor. So now it's time to start connecting my LEDs into my Arduino board, except I don't have to connect it this way because all of the pins from my Arduino board are also right here on this shield. So I can connect it straight into the shield. I have the red LED, so I'm gonna pick up my red wire right here, so it helps me if I need to um, troubleshoot my circuit. I'm gonna plug it into the long leg of my LED, so the bottom one of that red LED, and it's gonna go into pin 13. And now there's all these numbers next to the pins. They're really, really tiny right here. If I look at 13, 13 comes up, it's right next to the ground pins. It's gonna go in right next to that resistor. And I can plug that in just like that. And you can imagine if we're gonna connect the red into the Arduino, we also need to connect our yellow into the Arduino. So I'm gonna use my yellow wire. I'll go into the long leg of my yellow, which is the bottom leg that, of the yellow LED. Now I'm gonna put that into pin 12 one less than 13, it's gonna stack right next to it, just like that. And then we will do our green, and our green is gonna go into pin 11. So again, we'll do the long leg of the green, which is right here, that last little one that has an LED in it, and that's gonna go into pin 11, which is right next to pin 12. All right, so I have my resistor, I have one empty space up here, and then my resistor, red, yellow, green. And these wires, it doesn't matter the color, but again, if you go with the colors of your LEDs or something that's very easy to remember, it helps you troubleshoot if your circuit's not working quite right. So we wanted to be able to control this, and we're gonna control it with a button. So here's our little push button. You can push that little tiny thing up and down, and you wanna have your button span across this gap. All right, and that's because this side of the breadboard is not attached to that side of the breadboard. So you can span it across. There's only one way to do it. If I put it sort of rotated incorrectly, it's not gonna wanna put in, the legs will be in this little gap piece. It's not super, oops, super duper happy. Let me show you guys a side view of that. It's not very happy here in this angle, but if I rotate it so it spans the gap, and you'll notice that they all sort of, the legs go straight on in. So it should not be very hard for you to press that in. It should be pretty easy to go in. If it's not, you might be sort of 90 degrees off. So we're gonna connect our button to ground through a resistor. All right, so I'm gonna take my second resistor right here and I'm going to make it into a staple, just like my other one. And this just helps me put them in. Now, one of our grounds is way up over here and we've used that slot, but on the left-hand side, we have our power rail and that has a bunch of things. We have three volts, five volts, and a ground that comes out right there. So I'm gonna put that into the ground. I'm gonna put it from the top pin of my button into the ground pin, which is one up. There's this big gap right here and it's gonna be one empty spot and then you have your ground. So that is my resistor into ground. I'm gonna have one of these guys going into five volts, and that's just a normal wire. I'm not gonna use my lovely blue cable quite yet, because that's gonna be where I attach it to the Arduino. So if I want to use my five volts, my five volts is one slot above the ground. Let's double check, can't quite see. There's two grounds, so it'll be two slots above it. 
And I'm going to use a bit of a longer piece right here. So two slots above the ground, oops, and into the bottom of that battery, just like that. Or not the battery, the bottom of the switch. So I've got the switch, the bottom piece of the switch goes into five volts. The top pin of my switch goes through this resistor and into ground. And there is one empty space between them because there is two grounds. So this is our VN ground, ground, and then five volts. So you wanna make sure that you have one spot empty right here between the two. All right, and now we need to attach our button in. So we're gonna attach our button in from the same spot as this resistor. And that button is gonna go into pin 10, which is right beneath where we had our green wire. So you just slide that right in. And now our circuit is all built. We're gonna put it together by putting our shield in, make sure the bottom pin here lines up with the bottom hole. All right, if you shift it up one or two, sometimes it may look like it's okay. Like here I could go with the top hole, but you'll notice I have those two bottom holes empty and that's gonna mess up all of my wiring. So you always wanna align the bottoms, make it sure it's aligned on both sides and just sort of rock it gently in. All right, don't force anything because you might be sort of bending a leg and if you bend it the wrong way, then you might have a problem with your shield from evermore. All right, so we have this lovely little traffic circuit and now we need to go ahead and get our programming. So let's look at how we do that. All right, so here we are over in our Tinkercad. We built this circuit all together. You should check out our video on how we built that circuit if you wanted to build it online. And then we also wrote the code for it. And we used the blocky code to write the code for that. You can definitely check out that video if you wanna go through how we made this code. But this is the important part. So when you pull it up, you might just have the blocky code and you would come up here to where it says blocks and you would say, I want the block and text. Not just the text that can delete some of your code. We want the blocks and text. And you are going to copy all of this code. So command copy, control copy. You wanna get all of this code right here that we can put into our Arduino IDE because right now there's nothing going on. My board, my computer brain, if I attach it, doesn't know what to do. All right, so if I press this button here, nothing is happening because I don't have a program on it and we need to put the program on the board. So we wrote the program over here and now we need to get it from my computer onto our Arduino. And that is what we're gonna use the Arduino IDE for. I have the downloaded Arduino IDE that I use. And when I open up a new sketch, here is my new sketch. It comes with a little bit of code that's in there. But what you're gonna do is you're going to delete all of that code and paste in the code that we made in Tinkercad. Now we can check if this code works, if the computer's happy with the verify check mark. That doesn't put it on to the um, board quite yet. That just checks to make sure that all of the code is happy and it's written in something the computer can understand. Now, if I come over here and I click upload, then you guys can check and it, it will say done uploading down here. You plug it into your computer as long as it have, has power and then you can press your button, which is what we said we wanted to then start going through our traffic light. And you'll notice that it does. It goes through the traffic light every time that we press our button. This is a great new feature. The button is a new piece that we haven't used in our um, breadboard circuits quite yet, but this is a fun new piece. And now we've programmed it to go through that traffic light, which is a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for joining us with this project. We hope that we will see you for some of our other breadboard tutorials using Arduino. And make sure you check out our Tinkercad tutorials to learn more about how the programming works. Thank you so much and have a great one, friends.